If you want to write an outstanding essay on religious market theory, stick around. I'm going to be explaining Stark and Bainbridge's religious market theory. I'm going to give you free criticisms and I'm going to compare their theory with the patterns of religious participation in the world today. By the end of the video, you're going to be able to write an outstanding essay. Tom from the socialisyouth.com here. Religious market theory is one of the major theories you can use to criticise secularisation thesis. Religious market theory criticises secularisation thesis for arguing that religion is in permanent decline and they argue that secularisation thesis is Eurocentric, that it just focuses on what's happening in Europe and religious market theory argues that's a problem because in America and around the world religion is actually growing market theory argues there is a constant demand in every society for religion that it's natural for people to be religious and the reason for this is that religion is a compensator it compensates for real world pain and issues people experience by promising something which can't be achieved in the real world so for example if you've been bereaved and a loved one has died you obviously can't speak to them in the real world but the promise of life in heaven and being able to communicate with them compensates for the pain that you're experiencing. So religious market theory argues people are naturally religious and that there is a constant demand for religion in society, but it can go up and down. So from a religious market perspective, they argue religion goes through a cycle and that the cycle can be decline, where religion does go down, participation falls, revival, new forms of religion take the place of traditional religion and then renewal where religion starts growing. So secularization thesis sees religion as in a long-term decline whereas religious market theory argues religion goes through a period of decline, revival and then renewal. So from a religious market theory perspective in Europe traditional religion is declining but what's happening is religion is starting to renew itself. New forms of religion are coming to replace the old traditional types of religion. So secularization thesis tells us that when there is religious diversity, it becomes harder to believe in any single religion. So when there's a broad number of religions to believe in, people stop believing because it's harder to believe any single religion could have the truth. Religious market theory states the opposite. Religious market theory argues when there's a strong supply of religion, there's lots of different religious options to choose from, then religious participation in society as a whole increases. The reason for this is, firstly, that potential followers are definitely going to be able to find a particular religion that suits their needs, suits their interests. The second reason is when there's a high supply of religions, they all have to compete with one another for potential followers. And that competition between religious organisations means the actual quality of the religious services improves and therefore people are more likely to participate in religion because the religions they do go to are more likely to be better. So for Stark and Bainbridge, religious diversity leads to more competition, a better quality of service and therefore more participation in society as a whole. Stark and Bainbridge contrast the EU with its low level of participation with the US with its higher level of participation. They argue European countries have historically been dominated by a single state religion. So for example, in England, the Church of England dominated religious life. Even in the 50s and 60s, most people if you asked them would have said they were Christian, but what they were were members of the Church of England. And this shows that a single religion dominated. So the supply of religion in the UK and similarly in other European countries was very low. And Stark and Bainbridge argues this is what has led to the low levels of religious participation that we're seeing in Europe. The supply of religion was low, there was minimal competition, and the services offered and available to people were low. Therefore, participation declined. If we contrast that with the US, which has historically had a strong separation between the state and religion and strong protection of religious freedoms, there's been a very strong supply of religions in America. There's a massive range of religious diversity, many, many different types of Christianity that people can follow. And because of that high level of religious supply, lots of options available to people, 
Stark and Bainbridge argue the US is more religious than Europe. So the key idea here is when the supply of religion is high, then participation actually increases. Religious diversity, far from leading to secularization, actually leads to increased participation. One of the studies supporting Stark and Bainbridge's view of religious market theory is by Fink. He argues that religious participation has increased in America once immigration rules were relaxed in the 1960s which allowed more Asian people to immigrate to America and that led to the increase in a range of different religious organizations such as Hare Krishna, Transcendental Meditation and these are now established religion, religions and spiritual practices in America. So they would argue that this has expanded the supply of religions in America, which is why America is a more religious country. However, the issue with a number of the studies in some of the textbooks for sociology is they are taken from America. And we know that in America, the secularization thesis does still apply. America is becoming a less uh, religious country. It may be happening slower than it did in Europe, but there is evidence of a decline in religion in America. So it's hard to see how we can use uh, American case studies as a way of backing up this theory, which is arguing that secularization isn't happening and that it's Eurocentric. There are a number of reasons why people have criticized it. The first reason is Bruce's one, which shows that in America and Europe, religious diversity has led to a fall in participation. America is becoming a secular country despite having a huge supply of multiple different types of religions which people can follow. So Bruce argues both America and Europe are experiencing secularization. Another problem is there's many countries which have one religion which entirely dominates their society. So in Venezuela, for example, the Catholic Church entirely dominates religious worship. It's the main religion. There are very few other options for people, so the supply is low. However, they've got very high levels of participation. There are other examples we can use for this, like Ireland as well. So there are countries where the supply is low, but participation is still high, which contradicts Stark and Bainbridge's theory. Finally, Beckford criticizes Stark and Bainbridge for arguing that people are naturally religious and that compensators are a natural part of our life. This is very unsociological. And for more videos on secularization, check out the links in the description below.